easier. All right. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Academy of Astrology UK. I'm Rod Chang, and today again with me is Marcus. Hello. <laughs> so, especially when we with Marcus, because we know Marcus is focused on traditional astrology, doesn't mean he's not good in modern astrology. Oh, my God. If you <laughs> want you to talk about the, the, the astrology, is good in everywhere. I usually call Marcus the, the astrology Wikipedia. <laughs> yeah, that's very generous, actually. Rod, Rod is, is, is being very, very complimentary, which is lovely. So thank you. But I, I think I think you could take that epithet just as easily as I could, Rod. So. <laughs> not, not really. Anyway, so but, but especially I mean, I mean, about the traditional astrology, I'm, I'm into it, but I don't really practice with it. I like to learn, I like to read it. And I like to think about what does that mean in the modern sense. But usually yeah. that means that I have a twist it. And uh, somehow, well, some people maybe don't don't really like it, but it's okay with me. It's, well, it's my I chart. <laughs> I wouldn't. I wouldn't say I'm a purist either, right? I mean, okay. I started my education, as you know, with with you at the LSE. Uh, yes, true. So yeah. Both, we both learned modern. Yeah. Contemporary astrology to start with. Yes. Yes. I, I'm not. I'm not all about like ditching all the modern stuff. I think there mm -hmm. are some tools from the modern toy box that I still use, mm -hmm. like. Mm -hmm. um, um, composite charts, uh -huh. um, like sometimes midpoints. There, there uh -huh. are some things that I think are really handy. Yeah, um, it, it, from the modern toy box. It is uh, very interesting. Astro cartography. You know? Oh yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think there is no a definite line about, oh, I'm no, definitely traditional exactly. astrology. I'm not going to, to go that side. There, there if you cross be. a line, then no, there shouldn't be because I like what Sharon says. Sharon, also Sharon is a traditional astrologer too, yeah. but she's like, it's astrology. That's it. It's yeah. astrology. We all astrologer. We look the same thing. Okay. I, I like that idea. It's like, I mean, I mean, we are all the same, but there's, there's no point to make it about like, oh, you are. Anyway, we, this is yeah. not our, our aim today. But uh, today, I want to, I, uh, Marcus suggests we talk about a very interesting topic, which um, we don't really apply it very much. We probably know a little bit about it, but we don't apply it in the, in the modern astrology is called reception because for modern astrologer when we teach the uh student we were talking about the mutual reception and then they was like what does that mean where does the reception come from so things um, i mean when i when i learned horary and i i, I talked with you and sharon i learned oh oh that's because you have to know reception first then you can talk about mutual reception <laughs> <laughs> then you understand what does mutual reception mean? Because when I started to learn astrology and the people tell me, oh, consider mutual reception just like conjunction. I was like, okay. <laughs> now I learned that. I was like, okay, say that again. <laughs> <laughs> it's not quite the same thing. To be um, honest, okay. Yeah, so should we start with uh, reception? And if we really have time, we just talk about mutual reception, if we have time. Sure, okay. Yeah. So, so what does a reception mean? All right, uh, simply put, reception is just one planet being in another planet's sign mm -hmm. or in a part of the chart that that other planet has some power in. Mm -hmm. So the most obvious one is being in a planet's sign. So Venus in Leo, mm -hmm. you would say the sun receives Venus or Venus is received by the sun because Venus is staying in the sun's home mm -hmm. of Leo. Uh, or Venus in Aries, you could say Venus is also received by the sun, but this time by exaltation. Venus is in the sun's exaltation. Okay, then, we, we don't go that far. Uh, we don't go, we, is that, right? we don't go that far. Let's, let's just stop here. <laughs> so let me yeah. translate it into more than astrology. Fine. Fine. <laughs> no, so okay. no, 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 I, I'm definitely go, go, want, to, want to go that, that far, but I would just say, let's translate it for those, our, our beginner audience. So usually we say, when you say Venus in Leo, we will say sun, ruler, Venus. Usually we say that easily way, easy yeah. way, right? So, but there is also, we can also say it, um, sun, receive, Venus. Yes. Am I right? Yes. Okay. Yes. So, yes. but, okay, let's go step forward that, that you just say, because that will shocking those people who don't know about this. So, <laughs> it, because when I just learned, when I just learned a couple of years, oh, 
five years ago, six years ago, I was like, what? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so when Venus in Aries, yeah, it also related to Sun because yeah. the Sun is exaltation ruler yeah. of Aries. So Sun can receive Venus by yeah. exaltation. Yes. Now the, the, this isn't always relevant. Of okay. Course. Because if Venus is in Aries and mm -hmm. is in no aspect of the sun or the sun oh. isn't looking at her, uh -huh. then so what? But let's oh. say Venus is in Aries and is mm -hmm. in aspect to the sun, mm -hmm. squaring the sun, trining the sun, mm -hmm. opposing the sun. Well, mm -hmm. well, opposing the sun would be interesting because that would put the sun. <laughs> Uh, okay, that that's a funny bit. A mutual yeah. reception, but we'll get on to that. So the, the point the point here is that if Venus is in, say, the sun's exaltation mm -hmm. uh, and, and the sun is in aspect, then the sun is receiving Venus in the similar way mm -hmm. that the, the sun is receiving Venus in Leo, the sun's home, where it's much more obvious. And again, it uh -huh. doesn't really... But I think if you jump into traditional way, the only thing can happen is by conjunction for Sun and Venus. Well, of course, yeah. I mean, the yeah. Sun opposition Venus couldn't actually happen. <laughs> yeah, I like that cosmic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I like that cosmic <laughs> yeah, they, miracle. They, they, could, they can't square, they can't oppose, they can only yeah. well, At least we live in Mercury. <laughs> in, yeah, impossible configurations aside. So, th so the idea here, though, is that the basic premise is that uh, a planet that is received by another planet that that, that the planet that receives it looks after it so mm. it's easy to understand with how with sign rulers so okay say venus is in leo the yes. sun is the leo so the sun is responsible for mm -hmm. looking oh. after venus venus is a guest in the sun's home yes so say the sun was in um Say the sun was um, well, where? Where can we put the sun in sextile? Maybe from uh, Gemini. Say the sun was in Gemini and Venus was in Leo, and and there was a sextile. Then the sun in Gemini would be looking after Venus, and that the sun would be said to be receiving Venus. Could this um, happen? I was just thinking because the 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 furthest day is forty five degrees. Oh yeah, they, that can happen. I'm sure they can. They can uh, yeah, yeah, but they are in the in the either way, right? They are in the in the one in the one in the end of the sign, another one in the early yeah, they, they sign. Couldn't, they, they wouldn't be in as, uh, aspect. In aspect. They but they are in the 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 sign which formed the sextile. Yes. So this okay. this would be by sign. So by sign. So, okay. For so receptions actually do matter even if the aspect doesn't complete oh in, okay in, in traditional astrology you, you're going to look to to which aspects actually and finish complete you know what, okay you're, yes you're in the horary or looking at a situation mm -hmm. which is live mm -hmm. then it's all very well if these two planets have a friendly relationship with mm -hmm. each other mm -hmm. they never actually make it to, so, to contact mm -hmm. the thing may not happen but in a birth chart Mm -hmm. or in a in a chart that unfolds over many years and isn't mm -hmm. like a a single yeah. event thing. Yeah, it, it's sort of like just the planets having a kind of reception is important. It's, mm -hmm. it's like who who is looking after who in the chart sort of okay. thing. Okay, so let me let me give, give a quick summarize. So in a traditional way, the first the rece uh, reception is like uh, um, a planet go to the side and that this size ruler have to look after it look yes. after his guest yes, yes. and uh, and also we have to consider these two planet the the planet and it's a dispositor or this ruler it's are really, they i yeah. have they in the side can form the aspect yes but you don't need exact aspect but if they are in the right. relationship side like like a uh aries um okay let me say aries and aquarius they can kind of a sextile or yeah. aries it, with uh gemini they can sextile this kind yeah, of thing yeah, yeah. So, or, 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 so any aspect but the, the, the point here is that it depends whether they have to make an aspect or not depends on the kind of chart if you're mm -hmm. looking at a chart for a single issue mm -hmm. like a horary chart mm -hmm. then in order for an event to happen you need the aspect to complete but yes if you're looking at something like a birth chart where you're mm -hmm. analyzing talents and probabilities and things mm -hmm. over the whole lifetime then they don't have to be i see so the the, the mutual the so-called mutual yes is when um 
the planets are in each other's sign or okay each other's exaltation okay or a mixture of the two Doesn't, okay so so an example of that would be say saturn in aries and the sun in aquarius that okay mix, so, so saturn is in aries yes the sun's exaltation yes and the sun is in aquarius yes is ruled by, by saturn, saturn. So, so it's a mixed, sometimes called a mixed reception, okay. in astrology, but actually traditionally it was just called a mutual reception. Okay. So, so what that means is those two planets are supporting each other's agendas and they're fully oh. supporting each other's agendas because they are also in sextile to each yes, other. Yes, yes. In, in so, this case, yes. They're not only in sextile, but they are also like have a have a, a sort of friendly relationship so 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 saturn because he rules aquarius traditionally yes. where the sun is is yeah. like the master of the house so the sun mm -hmm. is his guest mm -hmm. and he has to look after the sun mm -hmm. and saturn is staying in aries which mm -hmm. is the exaltation of the sun so mm -hmm. it's kind of like there the sun feels anything in aries is really important so mm -hmm. it has to be really paid attention to mm -hmm. so it's almost like um it's you can look at this both either way round and both mm -hmm. ways could be kind of correct you could look at it like the sun has to treat saturn extra extra special okay is is, is where the sun is exalted or mm -hmm. you could look at it like saturn's looking up at the sun in this case and going you're amazing putting the sun on a pedestal oh it <laughs> that's is, sweet i do think it is kind of a two-way street yeah, traditional astrologers differ on this because this does become important in interpretation. Of I heard about that. <laughs> yes, yeah, but Bernati and a lot of the medievals and Lily yeah. said the planet that does the receiving mm. is the one that cares about the other, if you like. So, oh, for okay. example, so for example, in this case, the sun would be in love with Saturn, which never happens normally. But in this instance, in this, the, yeah, in this case, according to Bernati or, yeah. or Lily, because yeah. the sun is receiving Saturn into the sign where the sun is normally exalted. Yeah. It's like the Saturn looks all shiny and sexy. And oh. the sun's going, wow, you're <laughs> which never happens normally. But then then. Some modern astrologers like John Frawley say no, from doing okay. lots of horries, it looks the other way around. It looks like Saturn is exalting the sun. Ah. So I think it's probably the truth is the reason it can seem both ways is because it's probably a bit of a two way street. Yeah, okay. The, the sun, if it makes sense to me, I think Frawley's John Frawley is probably more right about this actually. Okay. Just looking at many horries, I think that Saturn probably looks up to the sun mm -hmm. when saturn is in aries mm -hmm. and the sun therefore goes oh you're all right you think i'm brilliant do you know ah. what I mean? and, then, and then so but when so it's an interesting so with mutual receptions what mm. it so one of the traditional phrases that's really useful here and i think this is i can't remember which author this is from which mm -hmm. is terrible it might be lily it might be bernati i can't remember mm -hmm. but it's something like um that the, the shorthand is is an aspect is the opportunity okay reception is its delight so okay lovely aspect is the opportunity opportunity yes but the reception is its delight delight ah oh. when you have a planet receiving the other it means yes i want that yes i'll have that okay. yes I, I need that okay if there's no reception mm -hmm. you might have a really nice aspect with like mm -hmm. a trine mm -hmm. and depending what planets there are yeah involved, Mars, yeah. Trine, Saturn, you might yeah. car might be driven slowly into a wall. It's still mm -hmm. not great, but whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, it's at least better than driving into a wall quickly. Mm -hmm. with, 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 say, Venus, Trine, Jupiter, mm -hmm. it might be a really nice, enjoyable party or a, a social gathering or something. something. Mm -hmm. But um, if there's mutual reception, mm -hmm. it's a freaking brilliant party and you have an amazing oh. time. You, some, you, you know it's, it's so good and it's one of those yeah. things you remember forever if it's just a venus trying jupiter and there's no reception it's like yeah it's a good party yeah it's a good party and that's it you know how about we use some example i know you prepare some example so i think people usually understand much better when we give the example yeah should we should we yeah. look at the the user just the Let's which one do, um the pope first okay okay <laughs> here we are so, that's so we get. Yeah. We, that's definitely not the Pope. Uh, sorry. <laughs> so Here we are. <laughs> Brilliant. Thanks, Rob. So, yeah, this is this is a chart I'm I'm slight, somewhat familiar with, not massively, but it's an yeah. interesting one. 
Pope Francis, obviously quite a controversial Pope um, in that he's sort of a little bit relative to other popes anyway a little bit mm -hmm. iconoclastic he's mm -hmm. sort of a bit non-traditional right he's sort true of yes deviated from the script a bit mm -hmm. uh, and what i find really interesting about his chart is he has jupiter mm -hmm. the rule of the ninth house of religion and belief in its fall in capricorn uh, yes in bad shape so that often indicates somebody who has unconventional beliefs who has uh -huh. a lack of faith or challenges with faith and belief uh, yep. is a bit materialistic whatever mm -hmm. But the interesting thing here is that he also has Saturn in Pisces. Mm. So That's you should be able to see that from a traditional yeah. standpoint, there's a yeah. strong mutual reception. I see. Because Saturn is in the sign ruled by Jupiter. Yeah. Jupiter is in the sign ruled by Saturn. And what house does Saturn rule? Saturn rules the seventh house mm -hmm. of other people. Yeah. Um, of the public. Yeah. And I think this is one indication of, of his popularity. Mm -hmm. And and it also just because the Saturn seventh ruler, seventh house of other people, uh, Jupiter in the seventh sign, sixth house, but seventh sign tends to bring more popularity anyway. I see. OK. So, but with that mutual reception, the people, why do the people really like him? They mm -hmm. like him because he is kind of down to earth because yep. he is kind of a bit of an iconoclast not i mean he's not tearing the church down but he's 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 breaking with tradition he's, yes he's true. sort of like he's really bringing it it feels like he's sort of taking some of that tradition and going no we can throw that out that's yep. not relevant mm -hmm. and there's a there's a humility to him and he talks openly about having struggled with his faith in the past so there's mm -hmm. a relatability there yeah that wouldn't happen if there wasn't that mutual reception okay the seventh ruler saturn yeah and jupiter the ruler of his ninth in the seventh sign i mm -hmm. don't think that sort of gives a and it's also interesting to me that one of the things he was famous for wasn't it like when he shortly after he became pope was washing that guy's feet he was yeah. washing some guy's feet in public which is obviously a recreation of a sort of whole christ thing yes yes thing, whatever. but it was like um that was a really famous moment i just thought that's that's incredible that because Pisces rules the feet. Feet, and, yes. And so it's kind of like him getting down and dirty with the public, with the seventh ruler, by yeah. washing their feet as a perfection yeah. of his faith. Exactly. Um, so, so it's fantastic. But it's interesting that with with that Saturn Jupiter mutual reception, with Jupiter being so weak, it doesn't remove the quality of the planet. Mm -hmm. I can okay. I see his his actions perhaps ultimately. Mm -hmm weakening the catholic church in some way perhaps by mm -hmm. internal division because mm -hmm. the jupiter in fall it tends to sort of like depress jupiter a little bit yeah yeah um at the same time as it makes the church him more popular and relatable mm -hmm. and the church more relatable mm -hmm. uh, and, and whatever so i'm sure there's loads more that can be said about that but i think it's a really interesting one because it, mm. it it shows that these two planets which jupiter's in a bit of a crappy state because it's mm -hmm. a night chart which makes mm -hmm. you a weaker and it's in four yep. and you're below the horizon and saturn's in a night chart which wouldn't normally be great but having that mutual reception mm -hmm. really elevates both of those planets because they're helping each other out yeah yeah so in this case we can see in this chart is a very elementary is that like a, they don't have form, really form aspect to each other right. that's what marcus say but they are in the the side these two sides, um, Capricorn and the Pisces, they can form the sextile in yeah, these two sides. Yeah, yeah, whole so, sign. So, whole, so, so this means they, they can still see each other in this case. Exactly. So this help this mutual reception to well, work now, better. If we, if we were to be really um, technical yeah. and precise, traditionally they'd say this was what would they would call a generosity. A generosity. Rather, because generosity was the traditional term in English. I don't know what the term in French uh -huh. or other languages uh -huh. in English. It was generosity. <coughs> it's when planets aren't in aspect, aren't in orb, you know, aren't okay. in aspect. Yep. But they are in, they can see each other. Yeah. You mm -hmm. have to see each other for generosity. You can have a mm -hmm. planet, say, say, Sun in Pisces, Venus in Aries, are mm -hmm, in, mm -hmm. would be in generosity mm -hmm, because mm -hmm. they are in each other's exaltations. Mm -hmm. um so so this is would technically be generosity reception in tradition was would be said to be 
to be really precise, mm -hmm. um, the general term reception you can just use to mean it's one planet receiving another, as we were okay. in the But in tradition, it would only be specifically be said to be reception when those planets were applying to an aspect with each other. Okay. Um, Must be applying aspect to each yeah, other. So, so otherwise, a mutual reception without an applying aspect would mm -hmm. be called a generosity. A generosity. Still, still be seen as powerful. Not okay. quite as powerful as if they were in exact aspect and applying. You know, I that's see. Strong. Yeah. But, but, but this is still strong. Yeah. So it's very interesting because I remember when I start the uh, astrology, I mean, in the, for the beginner, we don't really consider in the modern astrology, we don't really consider about aspect. We just say, oh, they are in each other's ruler. So they are this is a mutual reception. I think that's what we've been told, right? If well, I'm well, right. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank God. I didn't, I didn't miss anything. So, no, yeah. Yeah. So, the, 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 it, it, and, and I think as uh, as understand about what re, uh, what reception really means, this give me idea, say, say that reception, mutual reception is like conjunction. It doesn't sound right. It's not, it's not an aspect. No, like, yeah. no. Aspect they, is an opportunity for an event yes. to happen. So, so the nature of the event, that whether it's easy or hard is mm -hmm. going to be determined whether it's an easy or hard aspect mm -hmm. and of course by the nature of the planets themselves Do yes they on are they friendly planets are they easy do they give yeah. you free shit like jupiter <laughs> or, do they give you, or do they say where's have you paid for this where you know what's the bill mm -hmm. how much do you owe me that's saturn you know? oh, so, so it depends it depends who you're talking to right yeah the com yeah the type of conversation is yeah um, but the aspect is the in the tradition, the aspect is the opportunity, but say reception is mm -hmm. its delight. So so mm. generosity here would be like two neighbors or friends or mm -hmm. people who maybe they're not in direct conversation with each okay. other right now, but yeah. they really like each other and they'll support each other's agenda, you know. That's it, yeah. So so it's kind of like and often these things represent, there's, Lily actually says this explicitly, William Lilly in his book, Christian mm -hmm. Astrology, very famous horror astrology, he says this mm -hmm. explicitly in, I think it's his chapter on relationship horrors that was Seventh House, mm -hmm. when he's saying that, you know, the conditions in a horror about marriage or relationship, mm -hmm. will a relationship happen, yada, yada. He's saying that, you know, he goes through all the usual stuff, like you want an aspect between the rule of the first house and the yeah, seventh, seventh house. house yes. Applying to the rule of the seventh house or something, mm -hmm. blah, blah, blah. But he says, some, he says also in the little asterisk, if you have interchangeable dignities between Ooh. the ruler of the first and seventh, ah. and sometimes this can produce a relationship even without an aspect, he says. Okay. So so if you had the first ruler of the first house in mm -hmm. a sign ruled by the ruler of the seventh house and vice versa, I see. you might still be able to get a relationship even mm -hmm. if they aren't in aspect to each other. Because okay. it shows that both parties have very high regard for each other. They yeah. love each other. They're into each other. Yeah. So it's kind of like, even if the opportunities, the chart's showing that nothing circumstance-wise is mm -hmm. moving in their favor, mm -hmm. the fact that they're into each other, if those planets are strongly enough placed in the mm -hmm. chart, and showing they've got power to choose, pick their course a little bit. You know, yep. they're, they're both stuffed in the six and twelve houses oh. over because they can't do anything. But yeah, true. They, so this anyway, the point about that is what's remarkable is he says, even if they're not in aspect with each other, mm. just being in interchangeable dignities mm -hmm. is one testimony that that marriage or relationship or whatever might take place. That is super interesting. Mm. Uh, Talking about that, I know because we 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 know uh, I know you're talking about this special topic uh, for a while, and it's very interesting because traditionally we're talking about the mutual reception or the reception, but mm. there's a, like a planet like each other in uh, in in each other's generosity or or favor each other. Mm. And I remember you talk about something like uh, they reject each other. Do yeah. you want to have it? Just use a very quick, you know. <laughs> well, that, this, just... yes, yeah. This is a concept I first came across in in John Frawley's book, The Horror Text, uh -huh. um, where he talks about it's really if a planet's in the detriment of another planet, yeah, in the fall of another planet, it doesn't like it. Yeah, so I just gave it the name rejection because it's the opposite of reception, and it it is just as powerful. Mm -hmm. And I cannot tell you the number of times I've seen astrologers delineating charts and just completely ignoring this uh -huh. fact. And it's huge. It's massive in interpretation. So say you have a 
a conjunction between Venus and Jupiter. Okay. That's going to look very different in Pisces to what it is in Virgo. Now, th there's two reasons for that. In okay. Pisces, both Jupiter and Venus would be really strong, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Jupiter and Pisces rules the sign. And Venus, uh, and Venus exaltation. Yeah. Yeah. And, and they have a mutual reception by... <gasps> you know rulership and exaltation they oh okay love each other it by the way there's, Jesus. Another traditional <laughs> there's another traditional technical term for that that is called communion oh you have two planets in conjunction yeah which are simultaneously receiving each other oh so communion. sweet it's lovely isn't it it's like it's yeah like they're, they're so bonded they're like Phew. yeah you could have sprayed them <laughs> yeah now stick them in virgo and watch okay. what happens obviously venus in full yeah detriment oh but, but you have they are what i call rejecting each other oh now, dear so i i i invented up my i invented my <laughs> own name for this which i call contention, contention. <laughs> so do you know what I mean? it's like the yeah. idea here would be it's still venus and jupiter yes so it's not going to be like napalm death or something it's not no. a Mars sand conjunction it's, it's no. not like it's still going to produce some pleasant stuff but because okay. they are aggravating they are each undermining the other's agenda okay. so you can get stuff like big allergic reactions to soft drinks <laughs> okay. you know like yeah. the venus in pisces if venus in pisces is a really amazing yes reception or something yeah. mm -hmm. uh venus in virgo is like um I don't know, you kind of tried to organize a reception, but it ends up in a really grubby little office somewhere. And, yeah. Um, uh, everyone's let, let, me, let me give a little bit of drama about it. And, okay. Because yeah, I yeah, just watch some TV. Sometimes you watch some TV and then, and, and two people met each other, have been so nice to each other, been so friendly to each other. When they turn their back, they say, I hate her. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know what? The one I think about that is moon and venus in scorpio <laughs> that's the one i think when when i see that it's moon and venus in scorpio oh lovely to see you what, yeah. a, nice what a bitch you know what I mean? <laughs> it's, it's, it's that because they're like you know that the, they're in sort of like uh detri uh detriment, yeah. and fall detriment. Of each other yeah. and simultaneously yeah. not okay. loving it so so there are some really interesting ways this can play out so mm. the planet still like Cole Pepper, mm -hmm. uh, medical astrologer, said, uh, mm -hmm. like Jupiter, for example, I, I like, he's got some really good little mm -hmm. phrases. Well, uh, Jupiter is Jupiter, be he where he will. So he's talking about, say, Jupiter in Capricorn or Jupiter mm -hmm. in Gemini. It's not great, but he's still going to do Jupiter. Still stuff. nice guy. Still, still, still okay. He's still nice guy. Yeah. yeah. So, but it's not obviously that great as good. So, I, I, so one example of this, a famous example of this is, is like you've got moon conjunct jupiter in capricorn that's okay exactly oh yes attention. yes yeah so say moon conjunct jupiter in cancer opposite sign they're both lovely dignified yeah communion there's mutual reception yeah and conjunct is communion uh, amazing like really big hearted open hearted person wants to you know uh, look after everybody yes the world, um, big heart and sweet yeah that. Mm. moon conjunct jupiter in capricorn, capricorn um famous example of that now not everyone who has that is going to be this person yeah but like famous example of that would be hitler who had moon Ooh. conjunct jupiter and capricorn in the third house fourth mm -hmm. sign of his chart mm -hmm. and one obviously hitler was an amazing orator an amazing giver of speeches mm -hmm. third house of communication moon jupiter popular appeal yes yes popular appeal people are going to listen and, and and he's going to be able to convey big emotion to the yes public, exactly right? big yes emotion and and convince people and True. also what but what is capricorn capricorn is, is they're both moons in detriment jupiter's in fall yep. we don't have enough room his whole thing was lebensraum germany needs more lebensraum we need more living space mm. we haven't got enough space there's mm. never enough there's never enough room for us we mm -hmm. need more room people and this was jupiter in the fourth sign of mm -hmm. fatherland and in the third house of communication mm -hmm. how did that manifest big wow. rabble rousing speeches designed I to encourage see. germany to expand and take and that didn't end so well so mm -hmm. you've got the 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 jupiter mm -hmm. moon actually on the surface mm -hmm. doing their thing as planets and bringing some benefits yep the ultimate effect of the one on the other mm -hmm. because they reject each other mm -hmm. is detrimental mm -hmm. you know what i mean and it's uh, you could see this in the sense that i think his 
his appetite, his feeling that he wanted to always be up, up, up. Mm -hmm, he was, mm -hmm. he was taking. That's also Munjubita, yes. Always the one up. Yeah, he yes. always wanted to be up, right? Uh, yeah. yeah. He was taking like, I mean, I, I assume being, you know, running the war and losing probably had something mm -hmm. to do with it. But he was, he was taking like loads of amphetamines and stuff like that, and mm -hmm. they, they, uh, they gradually destroyed his mental health. I mean, there's some mm. sus suspicion that he might have had syphilis or something, but okay. I think the, I think there's, there's something about that. So, so the, these kind of, so that was the other chart I wanted to look at. Oh, you have an example the... of some really dignified planets yes. operating really badly because they reject each other. It's the okay. opposite of reception. And this is a uh, Jeffrey Dahmer serial killers. I, chart. I just put it on. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Rod. And you can see like, not everything's dignified and there's some real problem mm -hmm. aspects here as well. Mm -hmm. um, but, you can see he has Mars and Venus and Saturn in their own sign. Yes. Um, he's Libra rising Venus in Taurus, which incidentally so is Hitler, by the way. Um, <laughs> puts, the, puts the ruler in the eighth house, which is not always good for having mental stability. Uh, it makes a person very angry. Okay. Um, I mean, it depends what else is going on in the chart. And unfortunately, in Jeffrey Dahmer's case, he, he also has Mars in the seventh sign. So it mm -hmm. puts and Saturn in the fourth sign. Mm -hmm. uh, and he's born during the day, so Mars is kind of the the more difficult planet for him to mm -hmm. handle. But it puts both of the malefics in angular signs, which, mm. which emphasizes difficulty. The thing I wanted to point out here, there are two things. The first is he has this moon, this really cruddy moon Saturn square. Mm -hmm. It's especially cruddy because there is neutral rejection. Right? Ah. So should, should, I, should, I, should, I, should I should I should I should I should I should I explain yes. and try try to try to use your word so because moon in Aries is where Saturn fall uh, detriment detriment yeah, four, then four, four, so four. Uh, four yeah four yeah 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 okay yeah four yes where Saturn four yes so so moon dislikes Saturn because of this and the uh, Saturn in Capricorn also is in is uh, ruler, but is where moon fall, uh, moon detriment. detriment sorry, yeah. where moon detriment. So for this reason, Saturn is like moon. moon. Yeah. Oh wow. So exactly that. Now there's an interesting thing here. Where when in the tradition, when you said um, that, that Bernati has a really cool phrase for this, he says mm -hmm. when you have a planet aspecting another planet from mm -hmm. that other planet's fall mm -hmm. or detriment. Uh huh. He says, <laughs> I think it's when it's aspecting <coughs> another planet's fall. Mm -hmm. So in this case, um, I think we have the moon aspecting Saturn from Saturn's fall. Right? Okay, yes. It's like the planet, like Saturn would be, he said, um, the planet that is applying, in this case, the moon is separating, but let's say mm -hmm. that there's an aspect there. So, yeah, it's yeah. Chart, so it's still relevant. So it said it's like that planet is approaching the other one, offering them strange garments. What he <laughs> means by that is it's like, it's like the other planet is giving, trying to give them something and they're just looking at it going, what the F is that? Why, do you, why are you trying to give me that? I don't want that. I don't want oh. anything to do with that. Oh. I mean? it's, it's like a, it's like it's trying to it's like saying it's like somebody coming up to you in the street and offering you a chicken onesie and saying wear this and dance for me it's just like i'm not gonna do that do you know what <laughs> i mean it's, it's like he, but yeah, he says it like somebody going up to you and offering you strange garments you're i see like, what do you know what i mean that's, uh -huh. that, that's the idea <laughs> it's quite an interesting striking phrase yes um, yes that's but, so interesting but, but the idea here is that as, as rod just very clearly explained Saturn and the moon are what I call in mutual rejection. Yeah. And of course, they're in a square and a mm -hmm. moon Saturn aspect isn't easy anyway. Mm -hmm. So in this chart, we have Saturn ruling the fourth house, which is mm -hmm. the house traditionally of the um, father. Father, yeah. Obviously, it's parents and general ancestry. Yeah. Um, and the moon, which is, 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 which is his 10th house ruler, which is mother. Mother. So you can see from that that probably his parents had a very difficult uh mm. relationship mm -hmm. um, and that he probably had lots of emotional problems at home and those translated into his relationships because mm. that's the moons in the seventh mm. and there's probably a lot of emotional alienation i would go as far as with that with that mutual rejection as to go emotional abuse 
this is abusive because I it, see. it takes a moon Saturn square difficult anyway mm-hmm. moon Saturn square with mutual rejection mm. it's another level do you know yeah. what I mean? I mean it's just like intensified yes. so if they had a mutual reception if it was say um I don't know Saturn in in Cancer and moon yeah. in Libra Mm-hmm. say it was the opposite mm-hmm. then mm-hmm. you'd have this feeling of alienation you'd still have some maybe depression you'd yeah, still but have still... Some mental health stuff. but the, this but there's a there's a feeling of you'd be able to reconcile it somehow, yeah mm-hmm. to be able to integrate it psych- mm-hmm. psychologically mm-hmm. more you'd be able to yeah. get a handle on that shit and you probably you, you, your relationship with your parents might be, be be a bit distant and cold but mm-hmm. you could you could make it work you could get yeah. it handle with this it's like the and yeah. the other one you have this really dignified venus in taurus mm-hmm. very dignified mars and aries ruling the seven uh-huh. and again it's what i would call a a mutual rejection or, or in this case uh-huh. it's what i call a hostility the opposite of generosity right okay it's hostility not, it's not making aspect it's a generosity yeah. but in this case it's the opposite is hostility uh, uh, so so i think um yeah that they're, they're hostile to each other which mm. is what mars is other people partners yeah. And Venus in the eighth house of death is death, yeah. hostile to Mars. Ah. And Mars is hostile to Venus. So, I mean, obviously Jeffrey Dahmer is notorious for being a serial killer. Yeah. He, and and he apparently had a very very psychologically fractured relationship. Yes. With his mother, yes. Kind of Norman Bates style. Yeah. Um. And and you know so you, the 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 um opposite the the reception and its opposite mm-hmm. what I call rejection here. Mm-hmm. It's hugely important because it, it it just cranks everything up a few notches because you might just see the the Venus and the Mars and think oh they're really dignified why yeah. do you have such problems because you know like mm-hmm. just, yeah exactly the, the dignified Mars he was able he wasn't a bad looking man he was able no. to go, he was a gay man he'd be able to go out and pick up some quite attractive men yeah but then the issue was what would he do when he got them back home he yes them, you know what I mean? so yes yes. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Ooh, you know, we run out of time, and this is so interesting because I mean, I mean, from mutual, from reception in the beginning, we won't talk about, it, and then we go to mutual reception, and this rejection is a totally interesting idea. I think you can apply it into the, you know, the 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 dynamic between people or between in the any, relationship. Any, yes. Absolutely. Yeah. Any chart you can. You, yeah. You, the interesting thing is there was a traditional term given to this. What Wade Caves told me about this. I didn't mm-hmm. realize there was a term. Oh. Uh, he found it, I think, in Al Kindi. Uh-huh. Al Kindi calls it not reception. Oh, not, not reception. Okay. Uh, not reception. And Benati, as I said, did also recognize this. And he said, okay. but, you know, if you have an aspect between two planets, no matter mm-hmm. how dignified, mm-hmm. if one is in the fall or detriment of the other, then the planet who's applying will re- resist that planet. Le- it's like, this- oh, go away. Yeah. So, I mean, I mean, yeah. I remember the first time we read a chart with the, you, you, you apply this technique probably 10 years ago or something. Yeah. And there was like a, wow <laughs> i i try to do the same but i can never never go that flow like you you know, like a very easy like you da, da, da. i was like uh what does that mean what does that mean? because i probably don't have this kind of set of mind in the beginning and uh, yeah, i have to learn i mean it, it's just it's just practical because you, you 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 with the fixed stars and stuff you have a yeah. level of knowledge way beyond mine because you're yeah. a stargazer and you look at them and you yeah. memorize them so it's just familiarity isn't that's it? different yeah but that is interesting i mean i mean that it was this kind of a reception and also i mean i mean not reception it's very very interesting to to apply it into the like a dynamic between two planets and with the the things they represent they they, they represent about and that that is fascinating thank you very so much i think i think we should make two episodes of this but anyway it's one episode <laughs> so next time we should talk about a little bit more about you know different things about i, I mean traditional astrology is amazing and uh, if we pick up a little bit of things and explain that would be so fun thank Thanks. you very much Thanks, and uh, thank you everyone see you next time bye bye